What is up, gang? Happy Tuesday. I am so excited to jump on tonight. It's been a while since I've done a live video on Facebook, but I wanted to talk about probably one of the number one questions I get specifically from my repeat clients um, who are looking to reach those long-term weight loss goals, and that is, how do you stay motivated? How do you stay on track? How do you keep it together to really hit those long-term goals? Um, and you know, that is a common question I get. So if you're watching this on the replay, my name's Amanda Nybert. I'm a registered dietitian with a passion for health and wellness. Um, and my goal is to provide you with relative nutritional strategies so that you can stay on track or get back on track with your weight loss. And summertime is a really challenging time of the year to stay on track. Um, there's definitely a lot more obstacles in our way when we're looking at the different seasons of our life. Um, I find that, you know, in the wintertime, it's a lot easier to maybe dial it in, to stay focused because, you know, the days are shorter, we probably go to bed earlier, the events are less. Whereas in the summertime, it can be so much harder. The days are longer, we're out later, we're, you know, relaxing more, we're at the beach, we're at the lake, we're at the pool, which creates, um, you know, different obstacles that go in our way. And so I'm constantly being asked by clients in my lean program. Um, I'm constantly being stopped by past clients. Um, and, and this is the common, you know, thread. How do you stay motivated? How do you stay on track? How do you keep it all together so that when you lose the weight, you keep it off? So I wanted to give you guys what I tell my clients, like this is my response to them whenever they reach out to me looking for basically like a pep talk, like what's the pep talk going to be? Um, and the number one thing that I think that you have to do in order to stay motivated and on track is you have to be so dialed in on your why. Why are you doing this, okay? Why are you sacrificing, you know, that extra cocktail at, at the pool? Why are you packing your snacks with you um, versus eating what's available? Why are you taking an hour or two on Sunday to prep your meals versus winging it? Why? Why are you doing those things? Because if you don't have a good why, if you're not grounded in that why, then it's just so much easier to not do it. You know, it's just so much easier to, you know, grab the snacks that are available on the boat. And let me tell you, if you're on my boat, it's probably going to be like hot Cheetos um, and beer. Like those are the snacks available. Like I got to bring my own if um, I'm going to stay on track, you know, if, if you know, you're not grounded in that why. Um, and a lot of times people are like, well, I want to lose weight. And to me, that's not a good why. You know, it has to be bigger than that. Um, and so I think it's important. The first thing I tell my clients when they're feeling unmotivated, when they're feeling off track, is I say, sit down and write out your why. And most people have more than one why. You know, um, my whys are, you know, I want to I want to sleep better. Um, I want to be stronger. You know, I have goals in the gym, you know, so some of my whys are goals like I want to squat 200 pounds, you know, I may never do that, but you know, that's what I want to do. Um, I want to have less stress and anxiety in my life. You know, those are my whys. And then, you know, it's like, well, why do you want to lose weight? Well, I want to lose weight um, because, you know, I want to feel confident at my daughter's wedding. Well, good. That's a good why. You want to have confidence. You, you know, you want to feel good. Why do you want to lose weight? Well, I don't want to be, you know, 40 and frumpy. Well, good. You know, be 40 and fabulous. That's a good why. You know, why do you want to lose weight? I, I want to be more mobile. I want to get down in onto the ground. And I want to be able to get back up without two people helping me. Why? Because I want to play with my grandkids. That's a good why. Your grandkids, that's a good why. So you have to be super grounded in your why. And you know what I tell my clients to do? Write them out, okay? I'm gonna put an example of what my mirror looks like that I look at every single day. Um, and what I've done is I've, I've highlighted all my whys and they're all on sticky notes right there. And so every day when I'm brushing my hair and I'm putting on my makeup and I'm you know, brushing my teeth, I'm looking at those whys. I'm like, oh, okay, yes, I wanna be healthy. I wanna sleep better. I wanna have less stress, you know, all those things. And then I take it a step further 
So this is the next thing. Once you've listed out your why, you got to list out what are the things that are going to get you to your why. What are the habits that you have to be consistent with? Not perfect, but consistent with to get there. All right, well, I need a meal plan on the weekends. I need to pack snacks. I need to get 64 ounces of water a day. I got to get to the gym, you know, five days a week if I want to squat 200 pounds. Um, you know, I've got to meditate daily to reduce my stress. I've got to turn my phone off by 9, 9 p.m. Or, you know, all the things that I need to do in order to hit my why. So I have all my whys and then I have all the actions that I've got to do. And then, so I'm looking at that constantly and those are things that I need to be consistent with, okay? Because I always say, whatever you do to lose the weight is what you have to do to keep it off. You have to find a way to be consistent in your new lifestyle, these new habits, all right? Um, and then, you know, this is not really on my mirror, but um, the next step, if you're feeling off track and unmotivated, is to sit down and say, well, what are the obstacles standing in your way to do the things you need to do consistently, okay? not You don't have to be perfect. Um, you definitely don't want to live in that all or nothing mindset. That's horrible. That's where you really fail. But what are the things that are standing in your way to be consistent? Well, I hate drinking water. Well, that's a pretty big one if you've got to drink 64 ounces of water a day. So then you look at that and you say, okay, well, you know, I know I need to drink 64 ounces of water a day in order to lose weight. There's my why, there's my action, but I hate drinking water. That's where I struggle. Like I can only force myself to drink water for so long. So what are you gonna do in order to, you know, overcome that obstacle? Well, I'm gonna put lemon in my water. Perfect, now it tastes better. I'm gonna add a flavoring to my water. Maybe I'll add like essential oils. Perfect, okay. Maybe, you know, my first step is I'm gonna drink like Crystal Light or Propel, all right, perfect, okay? Um, you know, it's not a Coca-Cola, it's a step in the right direction. So again, identifying your obstacles and then finding what you're gonna do to overcome those obstacles, those are all the things that keep you motivated, okay? Keep you motivated. So the number one thing to keep you motivated and on track is you've got to be dialed into your why. Why are you doing this? Why are you making these sacrifices? Because guys, I'm here to tell you, living healthy is not effortless. Living unhealthy is effortless. It takes zero effort to eat crap. It takes zero effort to not go to the gym. It takes zero effort to sit on your couch and gain weight. There's no effort in that, all right? But being healthy, it takes effort and sacrifice. So you've got to recognize why you're making those effort and why you're making that sacrifice. It's got to be big and it's got to be constant and you've got to constantly be right, reminding yourself. Otherwise, it feels unsurmountable. It feels like you're never going to get there, okay? So keep that in mind. You are doing the work and your efforts will pay off. Okay, number two make small goals, all right? We love to live in these, so you know, we do have these big whys, okay? Your why may be, I wanna lose 100 pounds, all right? Um, that's a big goal and it's gonna take a long time to reach that goal, but you can get there. So you've gotta break that goal down, okay? So I wanna lose 100 pounds, okay, there we go. Um, you gotta give yourself 100 weeks to do it, okay? So then it's like, you. Know, so my first goal is I wanna lose 10 pounds. Okay, good, let's start there, all right? So break your goals down. You know, if your goal is to work out more, well, you can't go from working out zero times a week to working out five days a week. You are setting yourself up for failure, okay? If you're constantly looking at the fact that you have to lose 100 pounds, then you don't see the benefit in the fact that you just lost 10. If you're constantly looking at the fact that you gotta get to the gym five days a week, then you don't see the benefit in the fact that you made it one day this week and you made it none yes last week. That's progress. So make small achievable goals. That's key, that's key. I love these thumbs up, I love these hearts. I wanna see those when you agree. Um, so make small goals. It's a good idea to look at your week and say, okay, my goal this week, you know, don't look at it for, like the next month or the next six months or the, you know, all of that. Look at it in small increments. My goal this week is to get to the gym once. My goal this week is to, you know, eat out only three times, you know, make specific goals. And then at the end of the week, look, look and see what you did. Look at me, I hit 
three out of the five of my goals. That's a huge win. Celebrate in that. Okay, what goal did you struggle with? Okay, let's focus on that next week. All right, so small, manageable goals, maybe on a weekly basis, maybe on a monthly basis, you know, uh, just break it down, make them smaller, make them manageable. That's where you stay motivated. You're able to get those better. Um, consider rewarding yourself. Now, non-food rewards, okay? You are not a dog. We don't need to reward you with a, a snack, a, a Scooby snack or whatever. Um, so you want to have like non-food rewards, like rewarding yourself with food is a bad idea, okay? So think about something that you enjoy, that you want to work towards, that you earn, okay? Maybe it's, maybe it's um, you know, um, if you meal prep for four weeks, you get to order um, a meal prep service for a week. That sounds amazing. Like you put in the effort for four weeks, somebody else does it for a week, okay? And then you do it for another four weeks and then somebody else does it for a week, okay? Um, maybe um, your goal is to go to the gym. You wanna go to the gym, you know, you wanna increase the amount of times you go to the gym. So let's say, you know, your goal is to go to the gym twice a week for a month. If you do that, then you get some new workout pants. You get a new workout top. Let me tell you, I love workout clothes. You, you guys know this if you follow me on Instagram because I feel better. Like I, I used to work out in like just run down t-shirts and baggy, you know, I was like, I'm not spending the money on fancy workout clothes or just getting sweaty. But now I just, I feel better about myself when I, when I look cute going to the gym. Girls, we need to look cute going to the gym. So reward yourself with a new, um, you know, um, um, athletic gear. Uh, so think about small rewards like that, okay? Maybe it's you get a pedicure. Maybe you do some self-care. Like maybe you go sit in a sauna at a spa or do a float tank or, or do a yoga class, something like that. So set up small rewards. I let That keeps you motivated, okay? You got your why. You got your actions. You got your small obtainable goals. You got your rewards. Not food rewards, but um, non-food rewards. You know, okay, so this is a, another one. Surround yourself with support. Let the people know around you what your goals are, okay? Don't do this by yourself, all right? When you surround yourself with people that are supporting you, when you surround yourself with like-minded individuals, it makes a huge difference. It makes a huge difference. Um, you know, that's one of the biggest things that people get out of the Lean program is that daily support and accountability. You know, the fact that there are... 40 other people in their group doing the same thing, fighting the same battle, doing the daily posts, you know? So you gotta find that outside your, you know, outside my group. Um, so for example, how many of you will agree that if you and your spouse or your significant other or your friend, your best friend, if you do something together, how much more successful are you? Tons, right? Give me some hearts, give me some thumbs up. Tons, okay? Like the only reason why my husband, I'm gonna pick on him right now, is successful at dieting is if I'm doing, if I'm on board and I'm prepping and I'm cooking and we're eating together, you know, it makes a difference. Um, when your spouse is over there, you know, living his effortless, unhealthy life where he's, you know, eating hot Cheetos and drinking beer every night, watching TV while you're trying to eat broccoli, and you know, get your 10,000 steps in, it makes it hard. Like you just wanna eat Cheetos and drink beer. I get it. So when you're doing it together, when you surround yourself with supporting people, it makes a big difference. I see this a lot in the workplace. Um, so I used to work in the hospital setting. We had, I, I worked for the most amazing clinic um, over at St. Joe East. And we were, we had such, like when our drug reps came in, we demanded healthy food. We're like, yeah, if you want to come in, great. We only eat salads. Like that's what we said. You know, as a group, we bonded together. We would have healthy crock pot um, once a week. And so everybody would bring in a healthy crock pot, you know, not crap. We brought healthy things. So it's like when your whole office is doing something and you're supporting each other, it's so much easier, you know. So Sally Sue's got to get that candy jar off her table, off her desk. Because it's hindering my success. So everybody gets it together. 
Um, so I, I love it because I'm actually getting a chance to work with a big corporate um, um, business um, locally, and, and I'm excited to see what they're going to be able to do when all of their employees are dialed in and, and really emphasizes on healthy choices. So I think it's going to make a huge difference. So think about that. Surround yourself with people that support you. Express your goals to others. You know, when your friends recognize that you're on a journey and you're looking to be healthier, they're not gonna. They're not gonna force you to drink, you know, wine spritzers at trivia night on a Tuesday. I promise you, they're just gonna be glad that you're there. All right. Um, so again, it's good to kind of surround yourself with support. I've got a couple more, and then I'm gonna jump off. Um, visualize your results. This is really key. Okay, what you think is what you do. I do a vision board every year. Um, and it's more just like my life and, you know, my goals and things like that. But maybe you make a vision board with what your goals are, you know, visualize what you think you're going to look like when you lose 40 pounds, visualize what you think you're going to feel like, visualize how things will change. Like, will you be a little bit more sassier in your walk? Will you get a new hairdo? Will you buy some big old earrings? I don't know, but actually visualize what you're working towards um, it's so important to kind of have that thought process so that you know, you know, again, where's your why? What are you looking at? What is it going to look like for you to be down on the floor playing with your grandkids and be able to get up without two people pulling your arms? That's going to be awesome. That's going to be awesome. Um, so visualization is really key. I love meditation. I love visual, visual, blah, 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 blah. I love affirmation. You know, it's like, if you don't love water, you better wake up every morning and say 10 times. I love water. I love water. I love water. I love water. And I'm telling you the first six months, you ain't gonna love water, but the next six months, you're probably gonna start liking water. Um, cause it really, really works. So visualize your goals. Okay. Last but not least, be consistent, but don't be perfect. Give yourself grace, okay? Sometimes you just got to take a break. If you are so overwhelmed with all the things that you're trying to do to reach your goals, then it might be time to take a break from that goal, all right? It might be time just to sit back and not have to worry about meal prepping every week. It might be time to not worry about getting to the gym five days a week. It might be time to, to not worry about, you know, losing five pounds, okay? Um, it might be time just to focus on where you are right now. Now, taking a break doesn't mean gaining it all back. And this is in relationship to like weight loss and achieving heart health goals. You know, taking a break from trying to, you know, not drink Diet Coke six times a day doesn't mean going back to drinking Diet Coke six times a day. It means maybe we just have a Diet Coke every once in a while, you know? Taking a break from losing 50 pounds doesn't mean gaining back the 20 that you just lost, all right? It means figuring out what does it take to maintain where you are right now? Because that's the key. That was the thing that really brought this up is that, you know, I've run into a couple of people over the last two weeks, past clients of mine, like Amanda, I did your program last fall and I did awesome. I lost 10 pounds. I lost 20 pounds. I felt great, um, you know, and I kind of went it on my own and, you know, just slowly over time, I've kind of backslid. I've just kind of fallen back into my bad habits. I'm not doing, you know, I'm not living the lean lifestyle. Um, and I've gained it all back. And, and now I'm just, I'm pissed. I'm frustrated. Like, what did I do? Where's my motivation? So the problem is, is that, you know, they weren't moving forward. So instead of just taking a break, they slid back. They allowed that to slide back. Okay, so don't be don't be afraid to take a break. All right. But when you're taking a break, focus on where you are and stay there. Do what you need to stay there. You always have to work a little bit harder to lose weight and you get to work a little bit less to maintain weight. But it doesn't mean you don't have to work at all. All right. And that's where it comes with being consistent, you know, being consistent with the goals, the lifestyle changes that you're making is the key. You know, I get asked all the time um, from my clients with regards to, you know, weight loss. You know, what do you do when lean is over? OK, what do you do when you hit your goal weight? What do you do then? And I say, you keep doing what you're doing. OK, again, you hear me guys say this all the time. 
Whatever you do to lose the weight is what you do to keep it off. If you go back to the lifestyle that, that got you to where you started, then you will be back to where you started. It's inevitable. It doesn't matter what you do. So you just have to be consistent. Do you have to be perfect? No, you got to get rid of that all or nothing mindset for sure. But, you know, you got to be consistent with those lifestyle changes. You got to, you know, 80% of the time make healthy choices. You got to 80% of the time be active. You got to 80% of the time, you know, drink your water. You know, you've got to be consistent with the things that you know you need to do. So I hope this helps you guys get back on track get re-motivated. I hope it helps you to think about what those big, big goals are, what your why is, how you can get anchored into that why in order to stay on track, stay motivated. Um, and if you need help, I mean, if you're one of my past clients that, you know, is out there struggling, you've lost that motivation, you know, you've lost that on track mentality, I want to help you. Okay. Remember, anytime you're my client, you're my client for life. You always get that $70 discount. It's a great thing to take advantage of in order to back on track and get back on track. So I hope this helps you guys stay motivated. I'm going to post in the comments below, um, again, the things, my mirror, because I want you to see that, because I think that that's, again, the number one thing. Dial down on that why, get together those strategies that you know um, that are gonna be helpful and get back on track. I, I love it, guys. Give me some thumbs up. Give me some hearts. If you found this information helpful and beneficial, share it with your friends and family. Use that share button. Share it out. Because I promise you, there's somebody in your life that's struggling with motivation. They're, they're struggling to get back on track. They need to hear this, and I want to make sure that they see it. All right, guys. Have an awesome Tuesday. I hope to see you soon.